Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. My name is Song Fu Hong. I joined the National Yangming Zhao Tong University as an assistant professor last year. I, I'm so glad to give this talk here. Yeah, I think it's a very honor to share my, uh, to, to share my, uh, my research results to, uh, to every uh, experts. So this talk is about the uh, operational S-ray absorption spatial scope peak studies during uh, carbon dioxide reduction reaction using uh, various reactions I designed. Okay. Okay. Nowadays we are in the revolution of clean energy. We can use the solar energy, wind energy, or hydro power to uh, provide the required electricity to make the fuels or the economic chemicals. Now, okay, now uh, we are in uh, 2020, the solar and the wind power are the uh, minor part here. So we mainly use the uh, fossil fuel uh, now, but when it is in uh, 2050, uh, the solar and the wind power will provide the major electricity uh, for our world. So we can use the clean uh, electricity uh, to, uh, to, okay, to, uh, to react with uh, carbon dioxide to generate the chemical fuels or the hydrocarbons. Okay, so what is carbon dioxide reduction reaction. So we can see uh, there are uh, various reaction routes for different products. So uh, there, there is a, a carbon monoxide, bromine acid, um, methanol, methane, and the acetylene, uh, ethanol, or propen or propanol. So in this case, uh, we, uh, we can apply the, the it is electrocatalysis to do carbon, di carbon dioxide reduction reaction. So in this case, we need the uh, electrode, the anode and the, the cathode or the, uh, the reference electrode. So, and uh, we also need the, uh, the electro electrolyte and uh, the electricity source uh, we, we need. It. And uh, I want to highlight uh, the electrocatalysis is, is very charming. Yeah, because it can produce almost all products. Uh, uh, as we use a different catalysis, we can we can just uh, uh, we can just come we can we can obtain the uh, every uh, uh, every products we want. Okay, so also so the main goal of the uh, electrocatalysis is to enhance the overall selectivity. Yeah, because we have uh, so many products uh, for for this uh, for for the electro electrocatalysis. Yeah. So uh, the okay, the second one is the photocatalysis. When we provide the solar light and the carbon dioxide and the water, uh, we can obtain the uh, the products of the carbon monoxide, uh, methane, methane, or methanol. But we cannot, but we cannot obtain the multi-carbon products. So, so I, I think this is a, this is a kind. Of, uh, this is a, but uh, the photocatalysis allows us to use the solar light directly. So, uh, so many researchers also uh, research uh, the photocatalysis, and uh, so the. So the one is the thermal catalysis. So we provide the high temperature environment, such as uh, the 500 degree uh, Celsius to the uh, catalyst, to the, to the catalyst. So uh, they can uh, catalyze carbon dioxide into carbon monoxide or methane. So the advantage of the uh, thermal, uh, thermal catalysis is uh, the high stability. Uh, which means uh, they do not decay after operating over one one uh, one thousand uh, hours. Yeah, I, I saw this uh, I saw this number. Yeah, uh, from the literature. 
So, so uh, for carbon dioxide reduction ration, we have different uh, approaches and uh, we expect there are different uh, uh, catalytic uh, behavior. So we need to develop the in, in situ uh, techniques for these approaches. Okay, uh, so uh, I designed uh, uh, various uh, in situ SS uh, reactors for carbon dioxide reduction re reaction. So the first one I designed the, uh, the electro electrocatalytic normal reaction uh, a reactor for carbon uh, for carbon dioxide reduction reactions uh, and for other catalytic reactions. So uh, the other one is the electrocatalytic flow reactor. And uh, this one, uh, and this one is, uh, is, is different from the first one. So, so, I, so I just uh, named the first one is the normal reactor. And uh, the second one is the flow reactor. So, so the flow reactor means the electrolyte and the carbon dioxide can flow in and flow out uh, uh, through, the, through the cell. So, so this cell resolves the problem of a low solubility of carbon dioxide in the electrolyte. So the high activity and the high selectivity can be achieved uh, in this cell. So, okay, the last one is the photocatalytic gas flow reactor. Okay, we can uh, provide the uh, carbon dioxide and the simulate stimulated solar light here. So we can see the, this picture. So we can just uh, provide the solar light uh, to the catalyst service here. So I will introduce these reactors I designed and the uh, one information I obtained using these in, in situ reactors. Okay, so I will introduce the uh, in situ normal reactor first. Okay, when we use this in situ reactor, uh, I name it is a normal reactor. Yeah, it just a uh, it just like a container. Yeah, so I, but I I just uh, I just open a, a window to just to uh, allow the uh, the S ray can just uh, uh, can reach the catalyst surface. So uh, so. <clears throat> So in this uh, in situ reactor, the synchrotron X-ray was introduced here. And uh, we can analyze the fluorescent X-ray here. Yeah, so uh, the features include, uh, I can do the front side measurement and the back side measurement. So the, the front side measurement is mainly for the porous substrate, such as the carbon cores and uh, nickel form. Yeah, the, but the, uh, the disadvantage is the catalytic current in this in situ environment yeah, is much smaller than the, than the, than the normal uh, electrocatalytic cell. Yeah, because, uh, because we need to just uh, uh, put the, the sample, uh, the, 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 the sample service, yeah, uh, we, we, we need to put it uh, close to the tapton tap. Yeah, so, this, so in this case, uh, the electrolyte is hard to diffuse uh, uh, to, the, to the catalytic surface. Yeah, so the, so the overall current is much smaller. So, uh, so the, the other one is the backside uh, measurement. And the backside measurement is for X-ray transmittable uh, substrate. Uh, I think uh, I mainly use the carbon papers. Yeah, so the, so the advantage is the catalytic current will be similar with the, with the, uh, the normal electrocatalytic cell. Yeah, just, uh, just uh, when we do the in situ measurements, the current can be similar to the normal state. Okay. So we also uh, have uh, we also have the leak proof design, yeah. So uh, so we can see the the front panel here and the tray at the bottom uh, to prevent the the electrolyte leakage and uh, damaging the hatch 
yeah, because uh, the uh, because of the uh, the harsh, uh, the being a scientist, uh, uh, they really not they really not uh, like uh, uh, the electrolyte leakage, and uh, and you can just uh, uh, react with with their desk. Yeah. So and uh, the third one, we also have the uh, the just uh, double incident incident uh, uh, angle. So we can change the incident angle for the measurement. So, uh, so we can just uh, 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 we can we can uh, we can change the the the, the, the angle to the uh, to to a small one, and uh, and we can just uh, detect uh, how can you say just a uh, more just a uh, more likely surface. Yeah, when we just uh, tilt when we. Just increase the the, uh, the 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 incident angle here. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, this reactor can also apply it to other catalytic reactions. Okay, so uh, here are the examples I did before. So the first one is I I did the uh, high energy re uh, resolution high energy resolution for recent detection. As a as for the oxygen evolution reaction, and uh, I can do the uh, I can um, I can measure the uh, the in situ for the, the in situ in uh, uh, measurement for the hydrogen evolution reaction and uh, the oxygen reduction reaction. Okay, so about the carbon dioxide reduction reaction, so the copper is the only one, the only metal enabling to reduce carbon dioxide to hydrocarbons. And then the silver and the gold, uh, they, uh, they can uh, generate uh, the carbon monoxide. But then we can see uh, the nickel and the iron are not a good catalyst for the uh, carbon dioxide reduction reaction, but they are good catalyst to generate the hydrogen. Okay, uh, but when we uh, narrow down the uh, nickel size to single atom, uh, as the uh, atomic resolution TM shows here, uh, the, bright, the bright spots are nickel atoms without aggregation. And uh, the SS also shows each uh, nickel atom is separated by uh, nitrogen atoms. And, uh, <clears throat> and we can see no uh, metallic bond is observed. And uh, uh, surprisingly, rather than uh, producing the hydrogen gas, the nickel uh, single atom catalyst can uh, generate uh, the carbon monoxide and uh, the broader efficiency is almost 100%. So we found that the size can surely affect the uh, cat catalytic selectivity. And uh, so, uh, so, uh, so the results also shows the single atom catalyst uh, shows the, uh, the catalytic mechanism for carbon uh, for carbon dioxide reduction reaction instead of the hydrogen evolution reaction. So we uh, so we want to investigate the uh, the catalytic mechanism for the single atom catalyst. Okay, so we conducted the in situ X-ray absorption spectroscopy, and the results shows uh, the oxidation number of the nickel. Okay increases after the after nickel atom absorbs the carbon dioxide at the, at the surface. And the, during the reaction, the central uh, the, the central nickel will be reduced. Yeah, the addition state will uh, will uh, will decrease. And uh, we can see uh, from the S of results uh, the nickel to nitrogen bond is is elongated. Here. So, uh, so uh, it so 
Um, so from my experience, I think the single adding catalyst is a perfect system to study uh, in situ SAs yeah, because there is no bulk state for the target made for a target metal element. Uh, so so in uh, so in this case, uh, the the target metal element is a nickel is a nickel one. So so uh, so because there is no because there is no aggregation of the nickel atoms. So uh, so the nickel so the nickel uh, so the this uh, so the state the, the state change of the nickel uh, atoms will just uh, will just reflect the, the surface state. Okay, so uh, the in situ SPS proves the uh, the electrons delocalized from the the central nickel to the to the uh, other side of the C, the carbon dioxide, and uh, so from this result, so we uh, this also is explained the SS results the oxidation state of the uh, nickel increased. Uh, when we purge the carbon dioxide in the electrolyte. Okay, so these two uh, in situ results, including the SAs and the SPS, uh, allowed us to propose the detailed um, mechanism of the single atom uh, catalyst for carbon dioxide reduction reaction. So, so we can see the charge transfer uh, behavior between the between the center metal and uh, the and the the neighboring carb carbon here, and uh, we can also see uh, the bond elongation uh, during the reaction. So we can just uh, propose the catalytic uh, cycle for the single atom catalyst uh, in, uh, in 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 this study. Okay. Okay. So. For the uh, conventional electrolyzer for carbon dioxide reduction reaction, so we purge, so we, we purge the carbon dioxide into the electrolyte to to uh, saturate the states. But uh, uh, but the carbon dioxide is uh, the solubility is only five percent in the solution, so it will limit the overall catalytic activity. And uh, the current density is only uh, tens of a milliamp per centimeter square. Yeah, so the uh, the current density is too low, and uh, the bar efficiency is lower than fifty percent here. So, uh, result to resolve this problem, so the uh, flow reactor are developed uh, here. So the the carbon dioxide chamber here. Is separated, so the pure carbon dioxide can diffuse the, from the gas chamber through the substrate uh, to uh, to the uh, catalyst surface. Uh, so, uh, so the free phase surface can be formed at the catalyst surface. Yeah. Uh, so the three three phase means the the solid catalyst surface. And uh, the liquid, the liquid surface electrolyte, and uh, the gas phase is the carbon dioxide. So, uh, so the catalyst surface of the uh, the local uh, carbon dioxide concentration can be greatly increased the on, on the uh, on the catalyst surface. And uh, so, in this case, we, we can in, we can uh, greatly enhance the Total current density to hundreds of milliamp, or to several amp, so several amp per centimeter square, and then we can also uh, and the property efficiency of the carbon dioxide reduction reaction can also achieve over ninety percent. So so the the selectivity and the, the active and the, the total current. Can uh, can be greatly larger than the uh, H cell type reactor. Okay, so okay, so the other potential reactor is the membrane electrode assembly, also called the MEA reactor. So the MEA shows a low internal resistance because uh, there is no electrolyte. 
in the cathodic chamber here. And so the flow cell, the middle one, and the MEA system are good reactors for carbon dioxide reduction reactions. Yeah, because we can see the uh, the total current. Yeah, they can they can show the um, higher than 100, 100 uh, milliampere per centimeter square. Yeah, and the uh, for RDC efficiency is relatively high than the normal HCL. Okay. Okay, so to investigate the material properties of uh, for carbon dioxide reduction reaction using flow reactor. So we, uh, so we developed in situ as a flow reactor. Okay, so, so we can see this picture. So this is the uh, flow, re flow reactor for the uh, e electrocatalytic test. And then we just uh, dig a hole at, uh, at the gas chamber to create a to create a window to transmit the S-ray. So, so uh, you can see just like, uh, just me like, like this picture. Okay, so we, all, uh, we also design a front pane here to prevent the electrolyte leakage. Yeah, and, uh, and we can prevent the, uh, prevent the damage in the heart uh, as well. So, uh, so it is worth to mention the catalytic environment of the this in situ as a flow reactor is uh, is the same with the left one. Yeah, because we just uh, dig a hole here, but uh, we just uh, careful design the hole the hole uh, we dig. Okay. Oops. Sorry. Okay, so so uh, so so uh, so to, uh, so using this in situ as as a flow reactor, so we can apply the same current or voltage when we do the in situ measurement. Okay. Okay. Uh, but uh, uh, I think it is a it is some kind of is a a little. A, a, a little bit challenging, yeah, because uh, during the in situ measurement, it is, the system is quite complicated. So we need to connect the tubing. We need to set up the uh, peristaltic uh, pump and the potential state and uh, flow the uh, electrolyte and uh, the, the carbon dioxide. And uh, the substrate uh, uh, swing in is also uh, it, it's also a serious problem we we, uh, we need to uh, we, we need to solve yeah for the measurement okay so uh, so as we have designed the uh, the in situ flow uh, the, the in situ flow reactor so we go back to think to, to think about the single item catalyst Okay, the single item catalyst shows uh, shows the accident activity to carbon dioxide reduction ratio about uh, uh, ninety five percent carbon monoxide in single item catalyst in single item iron. So uh, the copper is also a good catalyst. Yeah, uh, so it can generate uh, about uh, eighty percent C two products, including the acetylene and the ethanol. So I think, okay, so I think uh, which one is better. So I designed the, uh, the iron single atom alloy, the copper to see which products dominates. So if the single atom iron dominates, so, uh, the catalyst will show the capability to C1 products. But uh, if, the, if the, the bulk copper dominates, we will see the C2 products. Okay, so in this case, uh, we compare different single, single atoms on copper surface by theoretical calculation, and uh, we found uh, the iron single atom is the best one. Uh, the experimental uh, results 
So let's say uh, efficiency match well with, with, with the uh, theoretical results. Then uh, we compare the iron atom number on copper uh, surface. And then we found that when narrowed down the iron size, iron shows a stronger affinity to carbon monoxide intermediates. The, the experimental result shows the iron nail particle produces the, almost 100% the uh, hydrogen without methane. But uh, the iron clusters can produce uh, near, nearly 40% of methane. So, uh, and uh, when we further narrow down the, uh, the size to single atom, this single atom alloy can produce 64% uh, of methane. Okay, so uh, the in situ SS allows, allows us to identify the iron single atom dispersed on copper matrix uh, during the reaction. But, uh, uh, but the interatomic distance of the iron to copper bond and the iron to iron bond is too close, even, even, uh, even if the intensity is quite different. So, uh, so in this case, we uh, we did the S sub beating to uh, to confirm, okay, to confirm the copper to uh, iron bond formation, and then we also uh, conducted the atomic resolution TEM to observe the, the brighter spots here, and then use the EOS spectrum to do uh, elemental mapping to confirm the atomic. The, the atomic di distribution of the iron here. So we can see the single atom iron on the copper surface. And uh, uh, the bottom one is the in situ Raman. So the, the, the results show uh, in pure copper, the uh, carbon monoxide intermediates just mainly uh, located on copper site. But in iron single atom area, the copper, so uh, the uh, the cup the carbon monoxide intermediates migrate uh, from the copper to iron uh, top site. Here, yeah, so uh, so the I think uh, from uh, from the the the, the incision Raman results, uh, we expect the the entire catalytic mechanism just change just change the. Uh, uh, when we just when we just add all the, the the single atom iron. Okay, so the electrochemical results show the major products of the pure copper is ethylene. Yeah, so the pure copper uh, uh, the pure copper favors the CC coupling to uh, to put, to produce the uh, C two products ethylene. Uh, but the iron single atom can change the reaction mechanism to generate the methane. So the iron single atom alloy the copper can generate 64% methane, and uh, the methane partial current density can achieve the 128 milliampere per centimeter square. Okay, so. So in this case, the single at the single atom iron just dominated the uh, the carbon dioxide re reduction reaction uh, selectivity, yeah, rather than uh, in, in, instead of, of the the copper one. Okay, so in another case, we studied the uh, the coordination number uh, effect. Uh, of the copper catalyst on the se selectivity of a carbon carbon dioxide reduction reaction. So uh, the, catal the catalytic mechanism contains two, uh, two reaction paths. So, so the upper one is the hydrogenation of the carbon monoxide uh, intermediates to produce methane. And uh, the uh, and, and, the, the other, and the, the other one is the CC coupling of the carbon monoxide intermediates 
to produce multi-carbon uh, products. Okay, so uh, through the theoretical calculation, the copper with a lower coordination number can reduce the hydrogenation energy. Yeah, but uh, does not influence the CC coupling energy. So the uh, so the uh, copper with the with the low coordination number favors the hydrogenation and uh, produces the methane. Uh, from the theoretical calculation prediction here. Oops. Okay, so uh, inspired by the theoretical results, so we uh, use the copper uh, copper uh, sulfonylene as the copper uh, uh, source. It is e easily reduced to metallic copper here. And uh, we use the uh, we use the carbon nanoparticle to combine the, the copper agglomeration uh, uh, with more carbon uh, carbon nanoparticle. The space can be used for grain uh, growth is is uh, becomes smaller. So with intro introducing the carbon uh, nanoparticle, so the methane selectivity increases from the 33% to 62%. And the current density also increased from uh, 40 milliampere per centimeter square to over 200 milliampere per centimeter square. So the maxima partial current density can achieve 136 milliampere per uh, centimeter square uh, for this system. Okay, so we conducted the in situ SS to identify the coordination number of copper uh, during reactions. So we analyze the first uh, uh, the reaction, uh, the, the river, the the derivative of SANES to obtain the uh, isolation number. Before reaction, the, uh, the copper presents a two plus state and uh, reduces to zero. Uh, during the reaction. Okay, so we uh, also we also observe the copper to copper metallic bond formation during the reaction. So uh, the S of peak intensity of the uh, metallic bond okay, decreases as the carbon nanoparticle added. So uh, without without the carbon carbon nanoparticle. Uh, uh, added in, in, uh, in the system, the copper coordination number is 74 and uh, the methane selectivity is only 33%. But when the ratio becomes one to one, so the, okay, so, okay, so the, the copper coordination number is 5.7 and the methane selectivity increases to 38%. And uh, the uh, the optimized condition is the when the ratio becomes four uh, to one, the copper coordination number is four point two, and uh, the methane selectivity increases to sixty two percent. Okay, so in this case, we want to highlight uh, we applied the total current density of the two hundred. And two uh, and twenty milliampere per centimeter square for this in situ measurement, as the same in the electrocatalytic test. So in this case, we successfully demonstrated the uh, the coordination number of copper catalyst on the selectivity of carbon dioxide reduction reaction. Okay, so we uh, we study another interesting case. So through the calculation of the reaction energies uh, comparing two different pace, here the first one is the upper one, so the lower one is the other. So we found that the reaction energy was lower, was lower, uh, uh, was lower when the additional uh, carbon monoxide intermediate was introduced. So uh, the energy decreased uh, uh, 
uh, will decrease the further uh, with another uh, carbon monoxide intermediate uh, uh, in, introduced in, in the system. So we concluded the other sorb other to other sorb interaction become more re remarkable uh, with the increase of the service coverage. Okay, so we also found we also found that in the presence of a carbon monoxide intermediates, the reaction energy decreases more for the uh, for the ethanol test compared to the acetine test. So we can see the, the energy here. <clears throat> so the calculation results shows the high uh, carbon monoxide intermediates coverage favors uh, selectivity of the ethanol. Okay. Okay. So, so, uh, so we just uh, adopted the uh, intermediate intermediate enrichment strategy uh, experimentally by introducing a uh, molecular catalyst on the surface of copper, and uh, so. So we found that the body efficiency of carbon monoxide was above 60% over, over a wide potential range. And uh, so in this case, uh, uh, so uh, it can provide the sufficient uh, carbon monoxide for the CC coupling state. Okay, so, okay. Okay, so the uh, ethanol uh, body efficiency of the composite uh, catalyst uh, was higher than than pure copper electrode uh, across the, the entire uh, uh, applied potential range and uh, achieved a peak value of 41%. Uh, in contrast, the, uh, the peak ethanol body efficiency for the pure copper just only 29%. Okay, so for now we desire to know under the severe uh, environment of the electrocatalysis, uh, because we because we uh, we supply the electricity and uh, and we add the electrolyte, so it, so it is quite severe. Okay, so the complex can be survived or not. So this is a question that we want to know. So we conducted the in situ SS to verify this question. Okay, so uh, as we applied the different uh, potential, uh, the oxidation state of the central metal is not uh, changed. And uh, the shape and the, and the shape of the white line is also not changed. So we figure out uh, the chemical state of the molecular should be the same. And the, the, the S of results also show uh, the iron to nitrogen bond remains similar before and uh, during the reaction. So we can confirm the complex can be survived, can be survived uh, during the uh, during carbon dioxide reduction reaction, even if the uh, applied potential is, is very high. Okay, so here's uh, and our case uh, to modify our uh, effect on carbon dioxide reduction reaction. So uh, we modify the catalyst surface with a cobalt oxide cluster. And we found that the composite catalyst can uh, in enhance the methane production. But, uh, when we add, uh, but when we add the cobalt metal on copper surface, we uh, obtain only hydrogen gas. So we just uh, assess, uh, so we just expect uh, the cobalt oxide cluster might not be reduced to metallic state uh, during the reaction. So to prove uh, this argument, we conducted an in situ SS with the time uh, with the time evolution under the uh, operation of 220 milliampere per centimeter square. We did not observe any edge shift 
and uh, the shape of the shape of a white light kept the same. So we believe the uh, the the cobalt outside cluster is st stabilized by the ligand incorporation. Uh, the ligand just like just uh, like here. So we think this ligand can stabilize the uh, the the uh, can stabilize the cobalt outside cluster. Okay, so <clears throat> okay, so the cover the cobalt outside cluster can uh, further improve the intermediate intermediate hydro hydrogenation to enhance the, the same production. Okay, so we also uh, we also developed the in situ SS gas flow reactor for photocatalytic carbon dioxide reduction reaction. Okay, so we designed uh, the gas flow reactor using acrylic material, which is transparent for the uh, visible light. Okay, so the features are, are uh, this reactor is a closed system enabling various gas in atmosphere, such as the hydrogen, the carbon dioxide, or the carbon monoxide. So we need to care for, uh, so we need, we, we need to be careful uh, when we use the hydrogen or the carbon monoxide uh, for, the, for this experiment. Okay, so, okay, so this reactor can uh, detect the element with a small concentration down to a point Point to uh, uh, one percent uh, using a LIGO detector uh, instead of the SDD detector. So, okay. So we can also use the simulated solar radiation to e evaluate the material the, the material uh, variation during photocatalysis. So because we use the transparent uh, materials here. Okay. Okay, uh, so the, okay, so, so, so the bottom one is the, uh, of the, is the picture of the gas flow reactor. So the catalyst was put on the top side of the reactor and uh, carefully sealed with capstone tape. And then we put a field of paper under the catalyst to prevent its drop to the uh, gas, the, to the gas channel. So we can vent the gas through the gas channel. Uh, we can, so we can uh, vent the, the the carbon dioxide, the hydrogen gas, or the uh, other gas we want we want to use. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So. Uh, so we uh, investigated the photocatalyst catalyst uh, of the atomically uh, dis uh, disper dispersed the copper on titanium dioxide. So uh, I think this is an uh, interesting uh, material system here. Uh, so we, pre we, we prepared the mesoporous titanium dioxide through the hydrolysis and the solver thermal process and uh, we modify the copper uh, species on titanium dioxide. And uh, interestingly, uh, the atomic resolution TM shows the copper species are atomically dispersed. Uh, we can see the, uh, the copper single atom, just a circle, uh, just, just a circle and the marker here. And uh, the ASPA results also show the single path of, of the copper Copper to oxygen single pass. Yeah. And we just uh, only so very weak st uh, second pass uh, for, uh, for, for, the, uh, for the materials. And uh, the white light shape is also quite a different from the copper standard. Okay, so we think the copper uh, is, uh, presents the single atom form on, on the uh, titanium dioxide. Okay, so uh, this composite uh, photocatalyst can produce methane uh, from uh, carbon dioxide. 
So uh, which is also uh, proved by isotope ex experiments uh, showing the, the figure B here. So in this case, uh, so we can so we conduct the in situ SS to identify the states of the covered species. So be, uh, before solar uh, emulation, the copper uh, presents uh, two plus state when we started uh, the uh, solar emulation, illumination, the atomically dispersed copper will aggregate and uh, reduce to metallic states. And uh, we can uh, show it in SANES and, uh, and the S sub results. And, uh, and uh, the color of the cast will change from the light green to a deep, to a deep green color. Okay, uh, but uh, okay, but uh, the dynamic uh, evolution of the catalyst structure and the chemical state are a reversible process. So when the catalyst uh, contacts with the air, the, the, the air, uh, the color will change back, and the catalyst structure and the chemical state will also change back. So I think it is a very uh, interesting system uh, um, and uh, from, from the in-situ uh, SAS uh, measurement. So we believe this result can show uh, the attention that the catalyst will undergo a dynamic evolution during the reaction. So, so and we can just understand more about the, uh, about the catalytic, me catalytic mechanism or the or the uh, or the structure change uh, during the reaction are uh, using in situ SS. Okay. okay, so uh, in summary, we have developed the three types of a reactor for in situ SS. The okay, the normal reactor for electrocatalytic. Uh, 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 for the electrocatalysis and the the and the uh, the flow reactor for the electrocatalysis and the, the gas flow reactor for photocatalysis. So, uh, <clears throat> and we take more inform information for different catalyst system using these reactors. So. Okay, we will design more reactors for in situ SS. Uh, the in situ MEA reactors is an interesting system that also exhibits high uh, catalytic activity and the selectivity for carbon dioxide reduction reaction. And we will also uh, remodel the gas flow reactor as a heatable one because some uh, photocatalytic reaction proceeds at a higher uh, uh, temperature. Okay, so I thank uh, Professor Hao Ming Chen of my PhD supervisor, uh, the Professor Bin Yu in Nanyang Technological uh, University, and the Professor Ted Sargent, my supervisor at my postdoc period. I also thank the Ministry of uh, Education and the Ministry of Science and Technology for supporting the, the funding. Okay, I thank the, uh, uh, the National Synchrotron Radiation Research Center to grant uh, the sufficient uh, bin time to allow me to conduct uh, the in situ uh, experiment. And uh, now I have a small group now but uh, we are working hard and uh, to seek the uh, uh, survive, surviving. Yeah, so thanks for your attention. Yeah, so if you have any question, just uh, please tell me and we can have a discussion. I think for your nice talk with great results with uh, great insect reactors. So we have actually two questions from Professor Adam Hitchcock, will you talk by yourself? Um, okay, do you want me to uh, pose a question? Yeah, yeah. 
Okay, so uh, really amazing uh, talk, amazing work, uh, and good luck with ongoing experiments of this type. I was wondering what the material uh, that you use to make the uh, non-photocatalytic reactors, this white material is the body of the uh, cell. For the normal reactor? The it's normal reactor, yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah, what is that material, white stuff? Yeah, that's a uh, PTFE. For the, for the oh, main container. Okay. You yeah. can machine it yeah. and keep its uh, properties so that you can tap holes in it, this sort of thing. It's not kel -F. Hmm, Sorry? Um, usually Teflon uh, PTFE uh -huh. is not very uh, machinable, right? Because it's a uh, soft yeah. Uh, material. Yeah, so... Uh, I think is the best candidate uh, to uh, to to this uh, to 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 the uh, to the this reactor, yeah. Because uh, I think the another one is the pig the material, yeah. So it is also the chemical uh, with high uh, chemical resistance, yeah. But uh, it's uh, too hot, so I. Yeah, so, so 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 that's why I choose the uh, the Teflon as the material. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Um, another question is from Lee Sun from Will you talk by yourself? Yes. Uh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. I uh, very great talk. So I have a question about the the data. So since. Uh, all this all this reaction you take the in situ data, right? So since some of the reaction will be release some gas during the uh, during reaction. So how to make sure the data quality during the you record the data? For example, in situ stuff. Uh, yeah, so this is a very good question. Yeah, so uh, the this her uh, this this uh, so the the, uh, the substrate uh, swimming is, is is very serious uh, for the in situ measurement when we use it for reactor, and uh, so uh, my suggestion is to use the uh, to find uh, to, to find a bin line which uh, which can perform the uh, quick S up or the or the fry scan. So you, you can uh, uh, decrease the the, the the decrease the uh, decrease the uh, uh, the dispersion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that means yeah. you you change the uh, the dispersing uh, concentration and to get the the good data, right? So you control the reaction to make sure to make this is really suitable for the re uh, record, right? Uh-huh, yeah. Okay. So another small question about, you're talking about many, many single aut atomic catalysis, right? So for example, you you got some some copper on the titanium oxide and uh -huh. uh, in the last work, you also make some iron single atom on the, on the copper. So uh, I'm wondering uh, in your data, so, for example, how this is a single atom bonding to the substrate? For example, does this uh, single atom bond with uh, metal, or does this uh, single atom bond with some oxygen or some functional group, and uh, and, and and so on? Okay, so I think uh, we can confirm the the structure uh, using the. Uh, uh, Based on, uh, according to the S of results, yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, so in, in this case, uh, yeah. For example, uh, in the uh, zero zero hour, that means before the reaction, right? You can see a very strong bonding bef between the copper and oxygen, the the bottom the bottom line, right? The the the, the black one, and if you yeah. with the reaction, the copper copper uh, bonding increase. That means uh, copper oxide reduction. Yeah. Am I right? Oh, that means yeah. before you react, the copper bonding with the uh, titanium oxide with the uh, oxygen, right? Uh huh. 
Uh, I see, I see. Okay, okay. So that you can see the reduction. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, yeah. I'm clear. Thank you very much. Uh, I think the, the copper atom uh, will, uh, they will migrate to just aggregate together, but, uh, but uh, when the light is off, uh, also yeah. so they can, yeah. they can speed off to the yes. or original. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so, this, so, uh, as, as you mentioned, this is a really interesting mm, phenomenon. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you very thank much. You. Okay, thank you for your discussion. And we have a simple question from Kiyotaka. How about the window material? The body yeah. of the material you said uh, PDFE, but the, how about the window? Window, yes. Thank you. Uh, so the, um, I'm Kiyotaka Sakura. Uh, I'd like to ask you about the window material. So for, especially for the photo -chatters. here is what window you are using. Maybe it is, it must be uh, Myra or something. Uh, you, you mean the window? You, you mean yes, the, yes. The, the yellow color one or the, or the, the outside, the transparent one? Mm -hmm. the, 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 the paid, the, the paid or, or the window? So, so you mean the, uh, the white color, this one? Mm -hmm. uh, so the how about yes. the photo, photo catalyst? Photo catalytic reactions, you showed the last part. Captain? Okay. Yeah, Captain, but yeah. Captain has a color, so therefore there's some, uh, there's some limitation for the wavelengths of the photon for uh, light. Yeah. I mean that the, if we want, yeah, that is a big problem to uh, follow the photocatalysis because, it, you know, the quartz is a good material, but the quartz is not so good for the X-ray transmission. Uh -huh. so the yeah. Captain doesn't affect uh, wavelengths or limit the wavelengths of light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you got a point. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Because I, I did not uh, take uh, took a pictures uh, mm. of uh, I, I actually uh, me measured uh, uh, the actual uh, measurement uh, I I did it set up mm -hmm. yeah 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 so so uh, because the capital is a yellow color so the yeah uh, yeah, yeah the, the visible light will be absorbed so mm -hmm. so 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 the catalyst cannot just uh, uh, the sort of the, the, the light uh, inside. So so uh, to do to solve this problem, so I just uh, uh, re relocated the uh, the uh, the solar simulator to the other side, mm -hmm. uh, the other side of the site. So mm -hmm. so so the light will be uh be, will be shining on the other side, yeah, from the back side, not mm -hmm. not on the front side. So, so from the back side, so oh, yeah. because, the, because the material is transparent, so so the light can just uh, directly just a uh, uh, shining uh, to to the catalyst. Mm -hmm. So, how about using some uh, optical tool to introduce the light into the material uh, catalyst directly? Uh, you mean catalyst? Optical tube. Optical tube. Okay, uh, yeah, uh, oh. uh, the object tube, um, <laughs> there are several questions. Uh, there are several problems. Uh, mm. I mean, uh, I, I, designed it, I designed this reactor because mm -hmm. I can just accumulate the, the, uh, the absorbed amount of the catalyst. So, so that's why I, this is why, uh, why I talk, I can detect the small, uh, concentration. Oh, yeah, because uh -huh. because of what I can increase the thickness. I can increase the uh, the total amount uh, okay. of, of the uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, the the light will will uh, will transmit there. Yeah. So so I can. So I did the this result. I I obtained this result using light mm -hmm. detector rather than SPD detector. So, so that's why to have a uh, have a com confidence to to show I can use this reactor to detect the really really small uh, concentration or amount uh, of of the catalyst. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your nice talk. Bye. Thank you.
Okay, thanks. Another question on the electrolysis from Peter. Peter will talk. Peter. <clears throat> Okay, uh, do you observe any effects of the X-ray beam on the electrolytes, such as radical formation? Oh, you, you mean a light? Electrolytes, yeah. Is there any damage by the X-ray beam on the electrolytes? Uh, I did not observe the uh, X-ray beam damage. Yeah, I, I think... Uh, uh, I think because uh, the care is the uh, there are electrolytes uh, uh, nearby, so they can just uh, they can just remove the heat uh, accumulation. So so I did not uh, uh, so the extra damage. Yeah, because uh, most of the time the extra damage because uh, the extra just hit our materials, it it, it can generate uh, a lot of heat, and then the uh, material can just uh, uh, they will get uh, quickly. So that's why I observe uh, the, the, uh, this phenomena. Okay, thanks. The, maybe the last question from Professor Masaru Kato from Hokkaido University. Will you talk? Yes, please. Yep. Um, great talk. Um, I'm curious about the first topic, um, nickel, nitrogen, doped carbon catalyst. Um, you show us the in-situ um, XAS data and potential dependent data. And you mentioned a little bit about the peak shift, I mean, the edge shift, uh, the panel A. So um, based on this data, um, would it be pot possible to confirm the oxidation state of the nickel? You mentioned a little bit about the, probably the uh, active species of the nickel would be, has, uh, have nickel one. Am I right? Uh, yeah, this is nickel, nickel one. So, um, uh, nickel. How did you confirm the oxygen state based on this data? Okay, uh, so uh, so we compare the the, uh, the spectrum with the uh, nickel standard. Is the nickel standard? So, uh, so the uh, so the uh, let, let us shift the edge shift just uh, just in, in the middle side uh, from the pure metal and the nickel outside. Okay, and uh, one more question uh, regarding the Fourier transform data. Um, probably you showed somewhere um, near this slide, but um, did you confirm the coordination numbers of nitrogen based on the um, Fourier transform of the exhaust data in the case I of the nickel nitrogen doped carbon catalyst? Yeah, uh, not that one, uh, on the first topic. Uh, which, uh, yeah. So based on data, so yeah, panel C. Um, did you confirm the quotation number? Uh huh. Nickel nitrogen, uh, like a uh, four or uh, less or. Uh, uh, I no. remember the quotation number should be five point five. I remember. Yeah. So the, if if so, why? Yeah. Do you have any idea? So the drawing shows that the ideally the coordination number would be four, but you got yeah, yeah. so do you have any uh, idea why you got a higher number? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think uh, uh, because of the uh, uh, we synthesize the single atom catalyst the, by uh, by hydrolysis and uh, just put the uh, materials into the very very high temperature environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so, so the so we can just uh, we can just tune in the uh, the uh, the precursor amount to uh, to to tune in the uh, coordination number. Yeah, for uh, uh, which means that the uh, some condition they will just only from the uh, two uh, the coordination number of two, and the sum will create the the coordination number of three, and the sum will create. A, uh, we have created the number of the four. Yeah, so I think uh, uh, when we just uh, uh, carefully just uh, uh, tune in the, the condition, so we can, uh, I think uh, we can just tune in the coordination number. 
Yeah, but uh, I think uh, the current number cannot be four. Yeah, it is not allowed before. Yeah, because uh, the material, uh, when they when the material from uh, the single atom uh, formed uh, the, so the uh, nitrogen to nickel, they will sound, uh, sometimes they, they will create some defect. So for the state, uh, so for the uh, state, statistic, uh, the consideration, so the uh, the uh, the actual coordination number cannot reach the four, uh, uh, which is the theoretical coordination number. Okay, yeah, I thank think you. That, uh, yeah, because uh, there is always the defects uh, in in our materials. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Brilliant talk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your great talk and discussions. If uh, uh, is there any other questions? Okay, if not, uh, thank you, uh, Professor. Thank you for your very nice talk. Okay, thank you. Thank you all.